presence of myocardial dysfunction in diabetic persons without overt clinical coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease and other conventional cardiovascular risk factors like hypertension and dyslipidemia has been called diabetic cardiomyopathy. As the prevalence of diabetes mellitus is increasing, so is diabetic cardiomyopathy. Initially, it manifests as diastolic dysfunction due to myocardial fibrosis and later with systolic dysfunction and finally with clinical heart failure. The initial description of diabetic cardiomyopathy was in autopsy specimens of four diabetics who had heart failure symptoms without coronary artery disease or valvular heart disease. It was associated with diabetic glomerulosclerosis. Two years later, a Framingham Heart Study report showed a five-fold higher incidence of heart failure in diabetic females and 2.4-fold higher incidence in males. This was after adjustment for other risk factors like age, coronary artery disease and hypertension. Diabetic cardiomyopathy is related to hyperglycemia, insulin resistance and impaired cardiac insulin metabolic signaling. Associated cellular level abnormalities are mitochondrial dysfunction, endoplasmic reticulum stress and impaired calcium hemostasis. Along with this, there is abnormal coronary microcirculation, sympathetic activation and activation of renin angiotensin aldosterone axis. These result in oxidative stress, fibrosis and hypertrophy. Early stage of diabetic cardiomyopathy is subclinical with structural and functional abnormalities. As time passes, it progresses to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and later into heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Non-invasive investigations which have been used in the evaluation of diabetic cardiomyopathy are echocardiography, computer tomography and cinemagnetic resonance imaging. Biomarkers found elevated in diabetic cardiomyopathy with heart failure were atrial natriuretic peptide, brain natriuretic peptide and O-linked N-acetyl glucosamine. Galactin-3 is one of the biomarkers for myocardial fibrosis found elevated in diabetic cardiomyopathy. Increased release of free fatty acids from adipose tissue and increased capacity of myocyte sarcolemal free fatty acid transporters also contribute to the development of diabetic cardiomyopathy. Advanced glycation and products of proteins and lipids on exposure to sugars can induce cardiovascular injury through cross-linking of extracellular matrix molecules. Potential treatment strategies that target myocardial fibrosis, inflammation, oxidative stress and insulin resistance have shown promising results in preclinical studies. These need further validation in randomized clinical trials before they can be applied to the specific management of diabetic cardiomyopathy. Till then, only conventional strategies of optimal glycemic control and lipid lowering can be relied on in addition to management of heart failure in diabetic cardiomyopathy. Here are the first set of references on diabetic cardiomyopathy. Second set of references are these. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.